From the Massachusetts Broadcasters Station of the Year, this is Western Mass News at 6 p.m. Winter weather advisories have been issued for the Hilltowns tonight ahead of our first of three storm systems. We'll take a look at the latest in my first warning forecast. And pregnant health care workers now have a tough decision to make. Is it safe for them to take the COVID-19 vaccine? We're getting answers next. Western Mass News has an exclusive follow-up to a viral story involving stolen puppies in Springfield. One of them now battling health issues. I'm Sabrina Riley with more on how you can help coming up. But first, it looks like some messy weather will be welcoming us into the new year. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Western Mass News at 6. I'm Kayla Burr, and we have team coverage for you. Western Mass News reporter Lindsey Kane is checking in to see what cities and towns in the area are doing to prepare for the expected wintry weather. But first, we're going to start things off with first warning meteorologist Jana Brown. Jana, everyone's excited for this new year, but this weather, it's looking a little bit rough. Yeah, definitely for Friday night. I think that'll be kind of the worst of the three systems that we deal with. The one coming through tonight, not a big impact, but if you do live in the Berkshires, if you live in some of the higher elevations in the Hilltowns, uh, you do have a winter weather advisory in effect starting at 7 p.m. and going through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is basically for very minor amounts of snow, an inch or less, and a glaze of ice. It's the ice that's the bigger travel concern. So slippery road conditions possible tonight and overnight, and then temperatures come back up above freezing on Thursday. Day, so you'll be able to get around just fine. Right now we are seeing most of that precipitation back to our north and west, but it is a little heavy in spots through western New York. As it moves into our area, uh, I think maybe after 8, 9 o'clock tonight, we will start off as rain in the Pioneer Valley. Right now roads are still dry, temperatures down to 35 degrees. It is breezy though, so wind chills are in the 20s for just about everybody. Temperatures right now are still hovering above freezing in most locations. Spots like Northampton, Cummington, and Pittsfield are down below freezing, but we are expecting those temperatures to climb as our cold front comes into the area. Wind right now, not too blustery in the valley, but gusting close to 30 miles an hour at times in the Berkshires. Going throughout your evening, not a whole lot happening. It is going to stay blustery, and then we've got showers closer to midnight coming in. If you do live in the hills, it'll likely start off as a little bit of snow, sleet, and freezing rain, and that will persist on and off overnight. Temperatures are going to be hovering close to that freezing point, though, so not a guarantee that everyone in the hills is going to be slippery, but it is a concern. Now, things are quiet as we bring in the new year, but not for too much longer after that. We'll talk more details in a few minutes. Kayla. All right, Jan, well, our team coverage continues with Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Keene. She joins us live with more on how crews are preparing for the expected weather. Lindsay. Kayla, this predicted weather is nothing like the snowstorm we saw around two weeks ago, but local Department of Public Works crews are ready to treat the roads just in case. Westfield DPW Director Francis Kane tells Western Mass News they're not expecting many issues with this weather, but are always ready to go just in case. We'll have our, our standby guys and uh, if needed, we'll bring them in, but we're not really expecting to, um, in our area anyways, having to deal with this in a, in a, a you know, a plow event or anything like that, that's for sure. Maybe some spot treatment. If it, if it warrants that we get out and be more aggressive with it, then we will. He says although we may see some wet weather, the DPW was always stocked up on road salt this time of year. Kane also wants people to remember to keep their storm drains clean to avoid any damage to houses. Live in Springfield, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thanks for that live report and for the latest on this system as it inches even closer, closer to our area. Make sure you download our free Western Mass News streaming app. Governor Charlie Baker today announcing that Massachusetts is staying on track when it comes to the pace of their COVID-19 vaccine rollout. But right now, some people are struggling with the decision to get the vaccine, the portion of the healthcare field that's currently pregnant. At Bay State Medical Center, doctors have developed a guide to help make the best choice. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo, she joins us live in Springfield with more. Audrey. According to doctors at Bay State Medical Center, if you're a COVID-19 patient who's pregnant, your chances of winding up in intensive care are five times higher. Now, on the other hand, the effects of the COVID-19 vaccine in pregnancies haven't really been studied. So these local doctors are trying to help women balance these two choices. 
we tend not to give pregnant people things that haven't been extensively tested in pregnancy. It's a decision pregnant health care workers have to make now to get the COVID-19 vaccine or not. And further down the line, others who are pregnant will face the same choice. Elizabeth Schoenfeld is the vice chair of research for Bay State Medical Center's emergency department. She says the effects of the COVID-19 vaccines on pregnancy have not been fully tested. However, the effects of the virus on pregnancy are serious. Schoenfeld has developed a decision aid to help people balance the risks. If you are older or you have diabetes or you have high blood pressure, your risk of getting severe COVID is higher and you may really want to think about getting the vaccine. If you don't work in healthcare and you're able to really isolate from other people and you can always wear masks and you're really staying very separate, your risk of COVID may be a lot lower. Lauren Westifer, a professor of emergency medicine at UMass Medical School's Bay State campus, also helped develop the guide. For her, the work is personal. My test just turned positive. She's not talking about a COVID test. Westifer and her wife are expecting another child. She says even as a health care worker, there wasn't a lot of information about the vaccines and pregnancy. Even though they both trials were over 30,000 people, they did not include any pregnant or lactating people despite the like large workforce. So we were, I was sort of left with like, well, what do I do? Westifer tells Western Mass News she ended up choosing to get the vaccine. Helping create the decision made was, was really helpful for me personally. As for the long-term effects on those hoping to become pregnant. There really have never been vaccines that affected future fertility, so it would be very unlikely that any of the mechanisms involved in this vaccine should affect future fertility. If you're pregnant and want more information, we have links to the decision aid on our website, westernmassnews.com, and it does come in multiple languages. Reporting live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. All right, thanks, Audrey, for that live report. Turning now to the latest coronavirus numbers in the state over the last two weeks. Today, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health reports more than 6,000 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the total number of confirmed cases in the Bay State to more than 352,000. More than 78,000 of those are believed to currently be active. The state also seeing 118 new deaths. That's a big jump from yesterday. The statewide death toll stands at 12,076. Governor Charlie Baker providing an update on vaccination efforts in long-term care facilities across the state today. The governor says all residents and staff at the Holyoke Soldiers Home who wanted the vaccine got their first dose yesterday. And as for other facilities, more are on the way. All told, there will be over 50 vaccination clinics in long-term care facilities this week, and they'll vaccinate an estimated 20,000 individuals over that period of time. Clinics will continue to be launched on a rolling basis to distribute about 219,000 doses of the vaccine to all long-term care facilities over the next month. All eyes are on Colorado tonight, where a new and more contagious coronavirus variant has been identified. However, health officials believe current COVID-19 vaccines will protect against this new strain identified as B117. And for more coverage on the coronavirus emergency as it develops, you can log on to our free Western Mass News streaming app. Western Mass News has an exclusive follow-up to a story involving stolen puppies in Springfield. As one of them is now battling health problems they believe could be due to the early separation from her mother while stolen. As the new owner struggles to pay medical bills, she is also refusing to give up on her new pup. Western Mass News reporter Sabrina Riley has more. This is Matilda, the Alvarez family's newest addition that joined them on Christmas morning. She's staying with us. <laughs> She's also one of the four bulldog puppies that were stolen in a home invasion back on December 13th, making the reality of this Christmas morning moment when her mom Rosa wasn't sure what happened. It was just a very emotional, emotional day when we found Matilda. Um, and... We thought, oh my God, she's back, you know, we're going to have our puppy back, and, and then now we're just dealing with this. Just hours after this happy moment, Matilda began to show serious signs of illness, whimpering and crying uncontrollably. And just the way her face looked, her face was like extra droopy, and her eyes looked really, really, really sad. Um, so I called the vet, 
And over the phone, the vet immediately told me that we had to bring her in. After seeing both a vet and animal neurologist who later prescribed an MRI, they diagnosed Matilda with some sort of bacterial infection that's impacting her spinal cord. The good news is it isn't a genetic condition and she will recover, but the likelihood of her developing this infection while separated from her mother at only four weeks old is high. They were in a home with cats um, and they were being fed cat food apparently, so they weren't being taken care of the way they should have been, you know, by being with their mom. The breeder has agreed to refund the money for Matilda, but as the owner of the Alvarez family is responsible for paying for roughly $6,000 in medical expenses. Sorry, I was trying not to get emotional this whole time, but just to give her all the love that she deserves and, you know, just giving her a chance to live because she's just so, so tiny and they say all dogs go to heaven, but Matilda's not ready for heaven. Matilda's ready to come home and she's ready to be with us. And if you would like to help, there is a GoFundMe account set up to help with Matilda's medical expenses. You can find a link to that on our website, westernmassnews.com. For Western Mass News, I'm Sabrina Riley. Now a follow-up to a story Western Mass News first brought you on Monday. The victim of a fatal crash in Great Barrington has been identified. Police say 92-year-old Ruth Hooten was exiting Lover's Lane onto Stockbridge Road around 2 p.m. on Monday. They say she collided with another car heading northbound. The driver of that car was 28-year-old Samantha Kay. Hewton died at the scene and police are still investigating this accident and ask anyone with information to contact Great Barrington Police. New at 6, Mayor Dominic Sarno announces continued support for the Martin Luther King Jr. Presbyterian Church as it continues to pour in. The mayor says the city will continue to work with local, state, federal and private partners to help them rebuild and find out what or who was responsible for the early Monday morning church fire. Anyone looking to assist with rebuilding efforts is asked to contact the mayor's office.